Hi there. Here I have a tiny solution. It's got uh, three projects. Uh, they're not really big. Uh, there's like less than a uh, thousand lines of code in it in total, I think. And uh, its main point is to demonstrate uh, the capabilities of active events. First, here I have uh, an um, uh, console app, public static uh, void main here, as you can see. And inside of my main method, I invoke loader dot instance uh, dot load assembly. The loader class of uh, phosphorus five is a singleton class, and it allows me to um, dynamically load uh, assemblies. So you can see the assembly I'm loading here is called plugin. Uh, I could have written dot dll, but it's no point actually because the framework will automatically take care of appending .dll unless it is explicitly given. Then I create my application context. An application context is exactly that, an application context. And its most important feature is that it allows me to dynamically invoke methods without having a reference to the project implementing the method in any ways. And you can see that up here. The only reference I have here in my main executable is phosphorus.core and system. Then I uh, create uh, some arguments through my node class where I pass in a named argument called left and another one called right with the values of 2. Then I invoke an active event called foo. And then I retrieve a return value from my uh, active event invocation whose name should be result and whose type should be integer. And then I write it to the console. Now, there's absolutely no dependencies between this project and this project. Still, I am able to invoke this method 100% dynamically this allows me to plug projects and assemblies together, almost like a traditional COM would allow me to do, only in a much more dynamic environment. Because when I, imp uh, when I invoke my foo method or active event here, then I don't know anything about this method at all, besides its name of foo. So it could say like um, blah, blah here. That would be completely relevant. I don't know which class implements my active event. I don't know the name of my method that implements the active event, etc., etc. Now let's try to compile this. And then after I've compiled it, since I don't have a reference between main executable and plugin, I have to go to my plugin directory, bin, debug, and copy my plugin.dll. Copy. And then I need to paste it into my debug uh, directory here. Otherwise, of course, I mean, it's not going to find the plugin.dll when it tries to load the assembly here, right? And now let's uh, try to run it. And as you can see, results of active event invocation was 4. This way I'm uh, able to dynamically uh, invoke methods whom I don't know anything about and put any amount and number of arguments into my active event handlers and return any number of return arguments back from the invocation of that active event. And it is all thanks to two concepts. Active events, which I am raising here, and the node tree structure, which allows me to uh, dynamically pass in and return any types of arguments I wish to and from any active event 
whom I wish to pass in or retrieve return values from. And that is the active event design pattern, and it effectively, effectively replaces uh, virtually every single commonly known design pattern on the planet. Because it allows me to create a plugin architecture, which is 100% dynamic, it means I don't need any abstract factory or any of those design patterns. It allows me to pass in any types and return any types to and from any active event invocation whom I wish to pass in and return types from, and so on and so on. And this allows me to build applications almost the same way you would uh, construct a, uh, a house out of Lego. <laughs> so, and that is the active event uh, design pattern condensed. Now, uh, underneath this video, you will find a link to my blog where you can download uh, this code and have a look at it yourself. However, basically, it uh, consists of uh, the Phosphorus Core uh, project, which has uh, six files. And uh, the most important class is, of course, the loader, which allows me to dynamically load assemblies. As you can see here, it's actually tiny. And uh, it uh, uses uh, some uh, reflection uh, mechanisms to uh, figure out uh, all the active event handlers from the projects I am loading into the loader instance. And then the application context, which allows me to raise active events. Basically, invoke methods on my uh, assemblies, which I have loaded using the loader. And here you can see uh, that uh, class, and that class too is basically tiny. Now, the real beauty of this stuff is that if I go into my class here, for instance, and then I do, um, let me in fact copy this guy, just to make it go faster, bar, bar, let me call this guy foo. And then uh, let me add one here, such that whatever parameters I'm passing in uh, will add one to the results before it uh, returns the result. Then I can go back to my program. And um, after creating my context, I can do context.override base event foo super event bar. If I now build my project, then I copy my plugin.dll, copy, and I paste it into my main executable output directory here, uh, replace, and then I run my project, then 2 plus 2 will be 5. <laughs> as you can see here. This way I was capable of actually dynamically overriding an active event with another active event. And of course in this example the uh, super active event is in the same file as the base active event. However, they could be in completely different projects. Meaning foo and bar wouldn't necessarily have to know anything about each other whatsoever. The only reference I have here in plugin is Phosphorus Core and System. The only reference I have in Phosphorus Core is System. And the only reference here I have in main executable is Phosphorus Core and System. So none of these guys knows anything about each other. Still they're perfectly capable of dancing together and creating beautiful functionality as a net result of their combined efforts. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.